Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be discussing all things when it comes to starting your hair routine. So if you are a beginner, you're new to hair care, or maybe you just wanna reassess your routine, just keep watching and we'll get right into it. Also, I'm gonna be looking at my phone because I wrote out all of the notes on here. I wanna to try to keep it as simple as possible. As we get into hair care, we know that there are tons of products out there on the market and it's really hard to know what is best for you, what's best for your hair care routine. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not a specialist. Any hair loss issues should definitely be addressed by your doctor or your dermatologist. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is trial and error. It can take a long time to figure out what products will work best for your hair just because everybody is so different when it comes to your hair texture and your hair type. Everyone's hair responds a little bit differently. It's really hard to know what's gonna work until you try it. Also remember that genetics plays a role in how your hair appears and there's only so much that you can change about your routine or about your hair. And keep in mind, your hair can change with time so whether it's the texture the density the thickness all of that can change depending on your hormones depending on if you're taking different medications so those are also things to know as we get into what's best for your hair type I just took my glasses off so that you don't have a crazy reflection before we get into buying any hair products before you start buying something at the store, you want to look at a few things. Things to look at before you go and buy anything would be your hair texture. Now this is going to be whether your hair is straight, if it's wavy, if you have really tight curls. So you need to look at that first. And then we want to look at your hair type and these kind of go hand in hand. So your hair type again is going to be whether you have coarse hair, fine hair, and that has to do with whether the strands of your hair are very small, the diameter is small, or it is larger. Porosity. Now porosity has to do with the way that your hair absorbs water. And you can do a couple of things to check this. The way that I figured out my hair is low porosity is I felt like the products weren't absorbing that well into my hair, so I found I would pile on more and more products as time went on. So, and again, that's because my hair just didn't want to absorb that product. So things that you can also look at, you take a strand of your hair out, don't pull it out of your head, but if you find a loose hair, you can also put it in water to see whether it floats or sinks to determine how much your hair is absorbing. So these are important to know so that you can choose the right products. So we have your hair type, the length, the density, porosity, and also if you have any damage. So if you're somebody who likes to color their hair, likes to straighten or use a lot of heat on it, you're gonna wanna address damage. If you have any scalp issues, you have chronic dandruff or issues like scalp itching or flaking and they're not responding to any type of shampoo, then you're going to want to bring that up with your dermatologist. Sometimes you'll need a specific shampoo for that. Your goal. Do you want to grow your hair out? Are you looking for just specifically your routine for health? or um, if you're trying to maintain, because that's gonna determine how often and how much you're getting trims. And getting a regular trim is really important, especially if you have any damage. So if you take a look at your hair, and if you notice that you have any split ends, you're gonna wanna go and get a trim. And I recommend when you're just starting your routine, every couple of months get like an inch trimmed off, just so that you can maintain the health of your hair. One other thing you wanna look at is your lifestyle. Now, for people who say they work out and go to the gym a lot, you're gonna be sweating a lot more, so that means you might wanna consider shampooing your hair more frequently. Now, that's also gonna affect what product you choose so that you don't strip the moisture out of your hair. I'm going to break this down into three sections, starting with your pre-wash routine what you do before you wash your hair. When your hair is dry, you're ready for that wash day, that shampoo. So I recommend that you use either a pre-wash oil or a hair mask, just so that you're protecting and maintaining the length of your hair. 
Um, and especially this is going to be important for the people that wash their hair a little bit more often because maybe their scalp is oily or again, they work out a lot. So some of my favorite pre-wash treatments, and again, my goal is growth and health, so my treatments are kind of tailored towards that. But one of my favorites is the Innate Life Rosemary Scalp Treatment. And I use this one specifically on the scalp and massage it in. The rosemary just helps to stimulate hair growth. My other favorite is the Berber Care Growing Season. This one tailored toward hair growth. Both of these products have herbs in them that are very good for growth and just the overall um, health of your hair. And one other product that I don't have here with me is the Keratin Nourishing Oil, which is good for the scalp and the lengths. These oils also help to form a little bit more of a protective barrier on your hair so that when you're washing it, you're not, again, stripping away all the oils that you need. The second section is going to be on your shampoo and your conditioner. Now again, if you have oily hair, you're gonna wanna pick something a little bit stronger um, or perhaps wash your hair a little more frequently. And this is where we come into assessing your lifestyle, what works for you. For most people, a gentle shampoo and conditioner is enough to do the job. Most important thing is to make sure that you're concentrating the shampoo right on your scalp and massaging it in because you wanna get that dirt and oil off of your scalp. I just like to shampoo the roots and then as I rinse the shampoo out then I'm just gently massaging it but I don't really feel the need to scrub at the ends of my hair just because that can cause a lot of breakage. So a gentle shampoo is all you need. I really love the Kalia Natural shampoo and conditioner. I prefer the hydrating line. Their favorites are the um, Biolage. I really like the Bond Therapy line and then the Umberto Giannini Grow Long line is really good. We're talking about conditioner Pick something, again, if your hair is dry, you're gonna want a hydrating or a nourishing conditioner. So again, with conditioner, make sure that you're focusing it on the lengths of the hair. There's really no need to condition your scalp just because it's gonna make your hair feel a little more weighed down and a little oily. So I like to condition from about my ears all the way down to the lengths. And I usually leave it in my hair for like three minutes in the shower as I'm doing other things and then just gently rinse it out. So, You've shampooed, you've conditioned your hair. Let's talk about our third segment, which is going to be post-wash. This is where we're gonna talk about leave-in conditioners, talk about stylers. After you've washed your hair, you've gotten out of the shower, you're gonna wanna use either a cotton t-shirt or a hair towel. I really like the aqueous hair flip because it can help to absorb all that moisture without causing any damage to the hair. What you don't wanna do is take your hair and rub it aggressively with a towel because that can cause a lot of damage and a lot of breakage to your hair. Something else I forgot to mention about shampoo, make sure that you're not using your nails when you're scrubbing your hair. You just wanna be gentle and massage the shampoo in. So just keep that in mind so that you don't damage the hair follicles. So after you've gotten out of the shower and you've used your cotton tea, you've used your hair towel, we're gonna wanna talk detangle. Your hair is really delicate when it's wet, so you're gonna wanna be as gentle as possible. If you have textured hair or curly hair, then here's where you're probably gonna want to gently detangle so that you don't have any frizz when you're brushing your hair if it's dry. I personally prefer to spray a leave-in conditioner. My favorite leave-in is the It's a 10 Miracle leave-in conditioner, and I'll spray it from the ears down, and then I section my hair and detangle. Make sure that you're starting from the ends of your hair when you're detangling, and then gently working your way up. You don't wanna cause any more damage. Straighter hair texture, you probably don't need to brush your hair when it is wet. You can just wait until it dries and then gently go through it. I find that my hair is just too tangly to do that and it's just a lot easier if I brush it when it's wet. If you're having issues with frizz, the dreaded frizz. If you're noticing that your hair is super frizzy, it could just be that your hair is wavy or curly. So you can try using like a, a gel or a curl cream and putting that in your hair and just gently scrunching it through. And if you notice any type of curl pattern or wave, um, that can address a lot of frizz issues. For many people, 
all you need is your leave-in conditioner and then maybe a styler if you're going to heat style so again we want to keep it to a minimum just to retain the health of our hair but you're going to want to make sure that you use a heat protectant now there are a couple of types that you can use you can use the spray-ons when your hair is dry or you can use a blow dry cream I really like the leave-in conditioner because it actually has heat protectant in it and sometimes I use a Dyson to just kind of brush through my hair so that it's not wet forever. We're talking about your three sections. So we had your pre-wash, your shampoo and conditioner, and your post-wash. So those are the three main segments that you're gonna wanna address first. And we're just starting simple. So before we start adding anything else, let's talk about what you can do to help your hair health overall. Uh, we talked about avoiding excess heat on your hair. So that's your straightening, that's your blow dry. Tangle from the ends of your hair and work your way upwards. So just to ensure that you don't have any mechanical breakage, start down at the bottom and then gently work your way up and try to get through the knots without pulling on the hair. You can also, if you run into a knot, just kind of gently pull it apart with your fingers before you brush. Satin scrunchies. So again, I always have one on my wrist. Um, they're gonna be perfect if you do any hairstyles, ponytails, loose braids, that kind of thing. Also using a satin pillowcase or a satin hair bonnet. I choose to use both because I know that the satin can be really good for your, um, your skin. And it just gives me that extra layer of protection for my hair. Here's another big one for my friends that like to wash their hair in the evening. Make sure that your hair is dry before you go to bed. Do not sleep with wet hair. Not only is this going to be harder on the length of your hair, but it can also cause some scalp issues. That extra moisture that just stays on your scalp can lead to buildup, can lead to fungal infections and dandruff. This kind of goes hand in hand with using scrunchies. So to make sure that you're protecting the length from say friction of like if you go out, you know, you wear a seat belt, you don't want that extra friction to cause damage on your hair. So things like loose braids, you can do loose buns, um, any type of hairstyle that's going to protect the length is good for this and then just make sure you secure it again with your satin scrunch. Sure that you're not washing your hair with scalding hot water in the shower. I know that we all love our hot showers, I'm guilty of this. And this is because it's not good for your skin. So, I mean, the skin on your body, but also on your scalp. You don't wanna use scalding hot water just because it can cause some inflammation, some irritation. You might also notice when you use super hot water when you're showering, it makes your skin itch. And this is because it can actually cause a release of histamine, which causes itching. So, I mean, I'm not saying go take a cold shower because I don't do that, but you want to make sure you use maybe medium um, heat on your, when you're washing your hair. Lukewarm to warm water. You can also do like a blast of cold water on your hair before you get out of the shower just to help seal in, seal the cuticle in so that moisture is locked in. Do not boil yourself in the shower. Last up, we're going to talk about hair brushes. So you can really use a brush that works for you. You have some things to choose from like wide tooth combs or your standard bristle brushes. I prefer wooden brushes just because the pins are really flexible. I don't think I have mine here. And you can use them to brush like on your scalp so that you're getting a little bit of a massage as well but just something that's not going to cause excess tugging on your hair. I don't like the ones that have the little bulbs on the end because I find that my hair gets stuck in those a lot and then it just like pulls the hairs out. So I prefer to use wooden brushes. Share a couple pictures of my favorites because when my hair is wet, I like to use a very specific brush or you can use a wide tooth comb, but something that's gonna be really gentle. Keep in mind, it's gonna take a little bit of time to figure out what works best for you. You can experiment with a couple of products. You don't have to go crazy. It doesn't have to be really difficult to figure out your hair routine. And again, this is just a guide for my beginners that wanna keep it simple. We can talk about adding serums for growth, the microneedling, that kind of thing, using um, 
different tools to help with your hair growth, but I'm going to put that probably in another video. So please let me know if this video helped you, if you'd like to see more, and if you want me to do a video just like breaking down my own hair routine and what I've figured out works best for my hair. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.